morning, everyone. I um, I get these crazy thoughts going through my head when I'm driving, and so that's kind of why a lot of my videos are like this. I'm behind the wheel. It's poorly lit and dark, unfortunately. But if I turn on the front light, A, you'll be able to see my ugly mug. <laughs> B, it kind of makes it difficult to look outside and be alert and everything else. And so, unfortunately, some of my thoughts are shared here. I've done that thing where I face the camera forward and I don't know, I'm not really sure I like those kinds of videos. Um, I mean, it, it works, but then I have to position the phone in a spot where it's awkward to use. And um, if I get a call or a message or something, it's just a little bit more dangerous. But anyways, I kind of wanted to talk about and touch on a major business topic that a lot of people don't think about. I like to call it skin in the game. You need to have skin in the game and you need to have it in a way that not just anyone can come and do what you do and unfortunately, due to ignorance, they'll come and do it for less. So it's no secret it's that time of year, you know. Um, year end just hit and even though you think for example well I'm a hot shotter that doesn't affect me you know that's what someone might say to what I'm about to talk about but you know Amazon Amazon moves more freight than anyone and whether people realize it or not Amazon is a freight broker and a lot of people are going to say, no, you're stupid. Amazon moves their own stuff. Amazon doesn't have any trucks. These are all comments that the uninformed usually make. But Amazon owns several hundred day cabs. They use them to move their own trailers from fulfillment center to fulfillment center. And then they use carriers to do the stuff they can't handle. And then they definitely use carriers to move stuff longer distance. They, they don't put their, their drivers over the road. This keeps their insurance cheaper because you know their service radius is 100 miles or less. And so Amazon is brokering what they call inbound freight. Inbound freight is freight that's going from a vendor into their system. In other words, inbound. And so if you are, you know, it doesn't matter who, um, Delta faucets, for example, used to be Delta faucet would get, you know, with a broker and that broker would give them a price to haul their freight into a given vendor. Well, Amazon eliminated that. Amazon went to their vendors and said, we can do it for less. Give us the highest price you pay for your freight. We'll put it on our load board and we'll make our load board not exceed that. So they're brokering those loads. I ran for Amazon for two quarters last year, the second and the third, and we did several loads where we went from a third party to a location that was not Amazon. Um, the location was someone else altogether and it was done through Amazon. It was a brokered load. And so why am I talking about Amazon and why do I think it affects all of us? Well, it's kind of like this. On a typical day, 
in the third and the fourth quarter, if you go to their load board, the cool thing about Amazon is the, their application allows you to filter things in a lot of different ways. And so if you filter where trailer is required, in other words, bring your own, for a 53-footer, that will show you inbound freight. In other words, it's not you're doing a power only hauling an Amazon trailer, most typically from one of their centers to one of their centers. And so when you provide your own trailer, the majority of the loads you're transporting are, um, are inbound freight from a third party. So on any given day when you log in, if you filter that way, you'll see anywhere from 1,100 loads to 1,300 loads. I've seen more, but that's the norm. And again, that's just where you're required to bring a trailer. That's separate from where they provide theirs. That's also separate from um, the box truck activity. And so having said that, I have another video um, that shows earlier in the week their load board total, including inbound freight, including power only, and including 26-foot box trucks, um, that total was like a thousand and change. And then when I filtered um, to show where you have to bring your own trailer, in other words, inbound freight, there was only like 200 loads. So let's think about that for a minute. On that one day, Amazon's load board would typically have over a thousand loads. And on this day, it had 200. So that's a swing of 800 loads. For guys like me that don't do power only, I, I have my own trailer. That sort of means I need to go find work somewhere else. Um, and if you're, if you're a transporter that, you know, you're, you're on with other carriers, you quickly make that shift. If you're a guy that, you know, you have a box truck and maybe back at the ranch, you've got a step deck, um, a belly dump, you know, a lot of guys that I know that have, you know, two or three power units, um, you know, smaller company, but definitely dedicated to the trucking industry. Um, you'll find that they'll have, you know, in their, in their stable, they're gonna have a variety of equipment. And it's precisely for this, for, for when the market changes. A side example would be, I've got a friend that lives in Michigan. I went to high school with him. He's a construction worker. And so he posted a picture on Facebook in the middle of summer and he was he was doing an addition on a house that was like right by the lake it was a beautiful view the whole bit and um, I remember commenting what do you do in the winter time you know you can't you can't frame a building in the winter time in the middle of a blizzard right and he's like oh he says I have a plow attachment for my pickup truck and my side gig is I go plow uh, smaller parking lots. My equipment's not big enough to do a big shopping center, but you know, I can go do you know your 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 dollar generals and your your smaller parking lots and I stay quite busy in the wintertime. Makes sense. And so likewise 
if you're if you're a trucker you know you need to be ready for that shift in in the season or the shift in the market and if you're a hot shotter you know you have the least skin in the game because you've gone out and purchased the cheapest equipment to get into this industry and unfortunately it's not necessarily the cheapest but you got in the cheapest it took the least amount of money out of your pocket so you either went to enterprise and you gave them a three thousand dollar deposit and you're renting that truck by the month again very little skin in the game and then you went out and bought yourself a trailer and you probably have $300 a month payments. And so the problem with that is, you know, when you go to these, these groups, they call themselves hot shots, but you're not hot shots. Um, and I know I beat that topic up a lot, but you know, a hot shot is one pick, one drop, and they're gonna pay you your rate for the whole truck. There's no stopping and putting together partials or anything like that. And so, you know, oil field, manufacturing, um, even film industry to an extent, um, they require hot shots. And five bucks a mile, not uncommon at all for hot shot. That's, that's like a normal pay. And so, what a lot of people have done is they've gotten into hauling with a pickup truck, LTL freight, and you're way more subject to the swings in the industry. And so right now a hot shotter, if he's looking at my video, is asking himself, what does Amazon have to do with me? How does Amazon affect me? Well, so if just a few weeks ago, there were 1,200 inbound loads going to Amazon, and that dropped by 1,000 loads on a daily basis, mind you. Um, a lot of guys like me, if I can't find somewhere else to um, keep my 53-foot dry van busy, you know, mine's a rental. Um, you know, I'll go drop it off say thank you very much and um, go grab a step deck. Um, I own a step deck and I own a couple flatbeds and I'll put them on the road. And so having said that, if I had a step deck on the highway and there's, there's a 30,000 pound load that I just picked up Let's just say, you know, a knuckle 60 foot boom. Some of those weigh about 30,000. And I'm gonna haul this from, let's just say, Dallas to North Carolina. If there's a little two or 3,000 pound load, and it's just a couple pallets, and I can throw it on the tail end of my truck, what you look at as your staple load to move your truck from point A to point B, that just became icing on the cake. Um, for me, a couple pallets or even a single pick that will lay flat on the tail end of a flatbed behind that 60 foot knuckle boom, you know, that's not gonna increase my fuel consumption very much. The 60 foot boom is already consuming the majority of my fuel and it's paying for the majority of my fuel. So for me to pick that up and, you know, picked up a few hundred extra bucks, that's easy. So that's gonna create pressure on what you consider your market as a hot shot. And so you're gonna start getting squeezed by Oh man, someone dropped a trailer on the highway. Unbelievable. 
And so you're going to start getting squeezed by flatbedders and step decks because there's more being put on the highway now. When one big part of the transportation industry's market segment dries up, people shift. If you guys think that, you know, someone with a couple power units, when dry van slows down, if you think they're gonna just park and say, well, I'm done for the year, um, no. Just like you, you know, they still got that insurance payment to make. In some cases, they have a truck payment to make. Um, you know, uh, taxes are coming up. You know, we need to file our taxes here soon, and some people don't have that put away. They, they need to still earn some of that back. And so, they're gonna switch gears. I'm pulling a 53-foot dry van because I switched gears. My company has multiple tankers we use in the oil field, and last year was the worst downturn, you know, almost in all of oil field history. And so I took some power units and put them over the road. Dry van seemed to be the hottest market. And I know some of you are gonna say, oh no, you should have got flatbeds, they make more money. The load I'm pulling right now is right about $5 a mile. Um, and I got three pallets. I got three pallets on board, uh, and they're not heavy. They're, they're about 100 pounds of pallet. So with that being said, you know, I moved into dry van because it was the simplest, the cheapest, and, you know, really quickly here, I may need to decide, is it time to turn these rentals in and switch gears? I'm using a dispatch service that still seems to be getting me some decent loads, so I'm going to ride it out a little longer, but... It, it may just be time here real soon, you know, if it continues to drop. I, I may not be the lucky one to keep getting these loads, but what I'm getting at is with my three axle tractors, I can switch the trailers that I'm towing. You know, I can put a reefer behind this. I can put a dry van. I can put a removable gooseneck. I can put a step deck, flatbed, and the only thing I don't have experience with is the reefer. I've never done a reefer before, um, but I've got experience hauling equipment. And so for those of you guys that are in hot shot, you know, you're gonna feel that pressure because, you know, just as I'm contemplating, you know, is it gonna be time to switch gears soon? I know a lot of guys already are. Um, I've got a handful of friends on, you know, I should say they're, they're acquaintances on Facebook. And, you know, I already see they're, they're under different trailers. They're, they're doing something different. And one part of the market segment is affecting yours. Why? People are making the transition to where they think they could have more steady income. And... The hot shop market is already flooded. Go to any Facebook group where people are talking about hot shots and you know the the main question, the main topic is I'm looking to start a hot shop business or what do I need to get started or you know trying to get my authority and you know people have this uh illusion this misinterpretation that hot shotting's like the end all be all and that you know you're you're gonna you're gonna be picking up your money with a shovel and throwing it in a wheelbarrow taking it to the bank and what people don't realize is any industry that anyone can get into i mean if you think about it you don't even need a cdl to get into the hot shot business think about that for a minute you do not even need a cdl to be in that business so 
anyone can get a non-CDL setup, come up with the money to, to basically purchase securement equipment, and you can go lease yourself on with someone. Um, if you save up a few more dollars, you can go get your own authority. And mind you, there's no minimum training requirement. There's no skills test. There's no knowledge test, nothing. And this person just became your competition in the hotshot world. And they probably don't have any business sense, but you know, again, I'm not trying to beat up on people, but you know, from my perspective, if you go out and buy yourself a fifty, sixty thousand dollar truck, and then you go out and buy yourself a ten thousand dollar trailer, so let's just say all in, let's just say you're in it for sixty grand. Anyone with halfway decent credit can go out and purchase this stuff, and they just became your competition. They haven't done their first year's tax returns yet and they're they're taking direct draws from their company so they may not be putting money aside to pay their taxes and you know a year later come April 15th they realize holy cow I owe the IRS a bunch of money but the whole while this person was taking those dollar fifty a mile loads and ruining the market Meanwhile, you're sitting there realizing, you know, you need to be, you need to be close to three bucks a mile to be profitable. And, you know, if you've been, been doing this a little while longer, you know, you'll agree that you do need to be making more money than people think because your $60,000 pickup truck has a very short um, shelf life. The truck is going to be garbage in just a few years. Unlike your tractor trailer trucks that you can basically continue to rebuild and get two million miles out of them, especially the older trucks with the with the pre-emission motors, those things will just go and go and go. So the hotshot market is very volatile. Not just is it volatile to what the market actually needs, it's volatile because you're competing with people that don't understand the business itself and they're in there doing freight for for rates that make no sense they're not making money but they don't know it yet and you're sitting there frustrated because you know you've got you've got everybody and their brother competing with you and so we came out of the oil field because the oil field collapsed on us. When I got into oil field, I had one of my biggest customers make a statement to me and it made sense. He said, you know, Miguel, you got into the lowest skill set requirement in the oil field business. He said, it's the easiest to get into. You don't need any, you know, real oil field knowledge. And when oil field drops, you're the first to, the, the, you're the first that oil companies want to get rid of. And to boot, we're the highest expense to their lease operating cost, um, or lifting cost, as some call it. And so, oil companies are constantly working to get rid of us tanker guys. And, you know, he was 100% correct. And when oil field dropped, I felt it. Um, we were looking to diversify, and we had diversified a little bit, but not quite enough to stay, you know, working and active. And so I did what other business owners would do. I took the assets I had and shipped it to another market. And right about now that, you know, Amazon and Target and Walmart and everyone else, um, you know, overstocked themselves for year end and are now not in need of that much inventory. They're just not putting out that many loads. 
And so with that being said, there's a whole bunch of dry vans out there that don't have work. A lot of low boards are, are thin right now. Um, you know, I've, even though I use a, a, a dispatch service, I still jump in and look at what's out there, you know, what, what the rates are, how big is, you know, the pool of loads. If I'm in a market and there's 500 loads leaving, I know my dispatcher's gonna find me a good one. If I'm in a market and there's 20 loads leaving, you know, odds are they're gonna be very cheap and it may make more sense for me to deadhead out. And so I keep an eye on things and, you know, it may quickly approach that time where, you know, the, the market is inundated with dry vans and I may need to, to make that switch, whether it's a flatbed, a step deck, you know, whatever, um, it may be time to move. Every driver in my outfit has tanker endorsements. Some even have hazmat. And so when I say make that move, you know, maybe we go power only and do tankers with, with a company. You know, we have options. Um, when you're a flatbedder, you know, in the wintertime, the drawback is you got to tarp a lot. And some people hate tarping. <laughs> And so some of your flatbed guys jump out of that, do dry vans during the winter, because it's easy, especially if you do Amazon loads, you know, the average load for Amazon's 10,000 pounds. And hot shotters are hauling 10,000 pounds behind their pickup truck. And they consider that a load, a 10,000 pound load in my tractor trailer doesn't hardly even affect my fuel mileage my truck consumes almost the same amount of fuel empty as it does with 10,000 pounds on board. And so the, the moral of the story is, you know, you've, you've gotten yourself into a market where everybody and their brother can jump in and destroy the market for you. You don't really have any skin in the game. And by that, I mean, you know, you're, I'm not saying you didn't make an investment because you did, but unfortunately you made an investment that goes upside down really quickly. And so it's tough to get out of one of those pickup trucks if you decide to go a different route because the minute you drive it off the lot, it depreciated a lot. And then you ran it for a year and put 100,000 miles on it. Now you're really in a hole. And if you compare that to you know, your big trucks, you get yourself a truck that's already experienced the majority of its depreciation, you buy it cheap, maybe you dump some money into it to bring it up to snuff on some maintenance issues, and you've got a truck that won't depreciate that much. I actually have a couple that I sold late last year. I purchased them for 20,000 a piece and sold them for 30,000 a piece. Um, a year later and a hundred thousand miles on the odometer more than I purchased them with. And so I made money on those trucks. I made money on the assets. That's, that's the part that a lot of people don't look at when they think about their, their cost per mile. What is your asset depreciation? Not on your depreciation schedule that you get to write off, but what's your true depreciation in terms of, I invested $80,000 two years ago. If I sell these assets, can I get 80,000 back out? Probably not. So you needed to have made profit to offset that, right? And a lot of hot shotters don't. And it's the biggest reason why you see a lot of them jumping out. So the moral of the story here is if you're gonna jump into the trucking business, don't jump in where everybody, everybody and anybody can do what you do. 
you know, it doesn't take a CDL to get into the hotshot business. You don't have to get IFTA, you don't have to get a portion plate. Everybody and their brother can do it, and for all you know, they don't even know how to back a trailer up. But now they're, they're your competition. Um, if you follow Hotshot Dave, he says it a lot. I do what others won't, I go where others won't, and I make more money because of it. There's a lot of truth to that statement. You want to be a little bit more specialized. Another um, Facebook acquaintance of mine, Chad, he, um, he's got a three axle removal gooseneck and he just messaged me over a picture last week, bought himself a brand new Pete, four axle tractor, and he's like, I don't know if I'm crazy or what, but I just spent a quarter million dollars on this truck. You know what that's gonna do is that's gonna eliminate a lot of people from being his competition. And while yes, come the winter time, that truck's probably gonna be parked, um, you know, in the summertime, he's not gonna have some knucklehead without a CDL, without any kind of major investment, trying to compete with him at $1.50 a mile. And my weather is changing here, guys. I got, um, I got snow coming down and the ground's starting to look a little freaky. It may be icy up ahead. I'm gonna end this video and focus a lot more on the road. It doesn't look good here.